Another challenge for the Green Hornet. His age, Hippie Jesus, and their rolling arsenal, the Black Beauty. On police records, a wanted criminal, the Green Hornet is really Charlie LaDuff, owner publisher of the No Bullshit News Hour. His dual identity, known only to Karen Dumas and to Mark Fellhauer. And now, to protect the rights and lives of decent citizens, rides the Green Hornet. Dumb dude. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. Roll it. What I tell you? I know, but I can't see anything. All right, take, take, lift it up. Lift up your horse mask. Hello. Yes. <laughs> hey, put it back on. <laughs> you mean? I hate Halloween. It's stupid. Since well, when did Halloween become like adults like it more? I don't know, but they do. I they really do. College. Eh, no, That's I don't think so. I, I, think, I, think, I think real adult, well, you probably probably partying anyway. It's real adulthood. It's like, I need an escape, and Halloween becomes that escape. Well, I tell you what, roll me that music. I tell you what not to escape. Told you, told you, told you, the market of life is set to have its best month since 1973. What have we been telling? What has Luke Nowacki been telling you? Overreaction is not a strategy. You pulled it all out and you lost your ass. Get some long-term investing advice. Don't bury your head and hope it all turns out for the best. Call Luke Nowacki at Pinnacle Well, 248-663-4748. Rational financial advice. No fooling. Yes, 248-663-4748. Did you get the I bond? I don't know. I have to check. You didn't do it. I mean, not me, but it's in. It should be. It should have been. It should have been done by now. If my instructions were followed. You did it. You triggered it. Yes. Because every, everybody was so busy getting that. Yeah. It crashed the site of the United States Treasury. I saw that. Yeah. And you didn't do it, did you? I did not do it. I need liquid. You need. Oh, you need liquid. I need money. You need some. I need some cash. Closer. Yeah. Which yeah. you should keep that anyway. We talked about that too. I know, but I have a major purchase coming up. So. Like, what am I getting for Christmas? That's my major purchase. I know. Exactly. Tell me? I don't want to spoil it. Okay. All right. Before we get into it, in the spirit of Halloween, um, you know, Red reprised his role as the, <laughs> what is it again? The fucking- The Red Baron. Count Red Baron? Yeah. Oh, and it's spelled B-A-R-R-O-N now, apparently. Yeah. I noticed Cause, that. Because <laughs> we left the spelling for hippie Jesus. Spell check, your Holmes. Tr- one your, R. Your trusty assistant. But it's good It's good for Red. It's two R's. So. It's, it's Barone. <laughs> yeah. Count Red Barone. Yes. Hey, here's a little little outtake. Uh, stay all the way through the show and watch this great fucking skit on the streets of Detroit. Welcome to another very scary Red... Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Okay. Oh. <sighs> It'll be six months... So, ah, fuck this, my accent. Hello, ladies. How are you doing this afternoon? Should I have to go this long? I bombed that bitch with a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the shit I do for this show. Yes, indeed. All right, man. Yeah, you know, top of the news here. Just I, I, I gotta say, did you see that aftermath of the Michigan Michigan State game? Yes. In the tunnel, what'd you see? Well, I mean, I I saw two different videos. Yeah, explain to the viewer because maybe people didn't see. Okay, well, there were two different videos of an altercation between the Michigan State players and the Michigan players. Uh, One version looked as though the Michigan player incited a response from the Michigan State players, and the other one just showed the Michigan State players pounding on this Michigan player. Mark, go ahead there, man. Uh, You were at the game. What what, what the fuck? He wasn't in the tunnel either. Maybe I was. 
No, I wasn't. I know um, you Mark's were. in the media tunnel. That's all. I did have, a, I did have somebody in the tunnel, but um, no, you know what? When I saw the, saw the first video that was bopping around mm-hmm. um, from the news, the Detroit news that was really floating around there, it's like, okay, a little pushing, a little score, you know, little John, not a big deal. The second video, though, I'm not a lawyer, but that kind of looked like assault when you're hitting somebody with a helmet. Would you see this four, one. six, eight guys? Beating on a beating on one guy like like yeah. the Michigan State squad just goes berserk. Yeah, right? and, and you they know, jump a dude. They did jump him, and he might have been asking for, it, but you don't hit somebody with your eerie your helmet. You just don't do that. That's true. Uh, can we play it? Is it? Yeah, it's up it? there, Joe. If you want to switch is. to I hope it, we got permission. But uh, you know, oh yeah, look at that. I mean, that's a straight up three times helmet right in the uh, back of his head. See now, look here. This is what this this is what I've been saying. Fuck y'all. Like I've been saying, it's college sports. Like, remember, like Harbaugh wasn't winning enough. Mm-hmm. He got to go, man. He's got to go. He just think he's not up to it. And I'm like, you know what he's up to? He's up to about you know ten wins a year. Maybe he doesn't win the big one all the time. But I said it. How many times I said it? There are no guns in the dorm room. Mm-hmm. There's no kilo of cocaine. There's no rape. Right? Raising good men to do good things. You represent yourself. You represent the universe. We don't need no jailhouse. So that that's what I'm all about. And I, I'm looking at like the sports books. I'm looking at Vegas. I'm looking at sports radio. You want to turn all this shit into WWE. And I don't really think that that's the mission of this. Right? And they keep dogging me. Oh, man, you get, get to the feud. That's the way it is. Yeah, that's the way it is because you say it is. But that doesn't mean I got to like it. But that's, you're right, but that's how things are these days. Everybody wants everybody to agree with them regardless of their position. That's fucking out. That's just, that's poor sportsmanship. Isn't that what you're supposed to be teaching? At the very least, yeah. I mean, you leave it, you leave it on the field. Shameful, but I'll give, I'll give Mel overpaid Mel Tucker, (laughs) who for some reason, we're not allowed to look at your contract. You know what I mean? The university's spending $1,000 an hour on lawyers, so we can't see Mel Tucker's contract when he's a public employee and the most highly paid public employee in the state of Michigan, is something not right there. No, I agree. Right? Yeah. But I'm going to give him his credit because today four guys get suspended. That's what you do. Mm-hmm. That's how you get a hold of the culture. That's how you instill shit in young men. That's mm-hmm. true. And, and they learn something. Mm-hmm. Let us hope. And he seems like a good guy in that regard. I, right? I totally agree we'll with see. it. Now, I haven't said that. I hope he keeps losing, but whatever. Look at fucking Jawan Howard. True. Yeah. Okay, this is the coach slugging people. What'd he get? Uh, a he- suspension... Uh, for the rest of the regular season. But like you guys five, forgot all about, about five that. Five games. You, you, like, everybody forgot all about that. Like five games, and then they let him in for the tournament. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, what is that? Because well, it's about it's, winning. Yeah, exactly. It, isn't it? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I mean, th- there's a lot of people making noise that Jaden Reed wasn't one of the four guys when he's in mm-hmm. the video. I don't know, you know, but based on this video, I don't see him on there, but... The implication is, oh, he's really good. You're not going to suspend somebody. But that's what happens really at good. the college level. It happens at the professional yeah, sports level. It, behavior is overlooked for talent wins. or for wins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Period. that's it. Yeah. That's how it is. Yeah, but it doesn't have to be. It shouldn't be. Well, then. Well, when there's a lot of money involved, it, that's what it's going to happen. Yep. But again, I wasn't sure if like uh, Juwan Howard should have been fired. I was thinking maybe so because it wasn't his first time yeah. getting into it. Didn't he throw a chair or something? But didn't the guy touch him first, though? I mean, oh, oh, no, no, if I remember. That, that's fake. That's, uh, that's fake. I'm from Chicago. Okay, Donald Trump. No, you, <laughs> no it's, it's fake. Doesn't look like Jawan Howard knows how to fight. You, uh, he was touching me. Dude, he came up and like, you know, people do t- Charlie, touch people your hands. shouldn't put their hands on you. I, that I bullshit. Care. No, don't make excuses okay. for this. I'm not making an excuse. A, g- a guy comes over there and he, and he rests his hand on yours like he's trying to talk to you. That's not pushing a no, guy. but yeah. I didn't say. But if You're you, the fucking coach I of am Michigan. Charlie, if, in, uh, well, that's, uh, we, and so I feel sorry for him for something's that. Something's to be expected. But yeah, you're right. But the thing about it is, is that people can't just, regardless of who they're doing it to or the position that they hold, after a certain point, what you're doing is disrespectful. Respectful. Now, I'm not saying that justifies your response. Well, then let's but stop. It's, but it, but no, it's no, two, no. Then but you it's said but. So no, no, no. Oh, that, Charlie. No way. It's because no it's way Michigan. in shit would happen because it's Michigan. I'm fucking You're coming down ripping on our successful yeah. coach. And you know, I, I went to school when he went to school. No, he went, he went. Wasn't out. he a cheerleader? When did he go? He was 91. Uh, yeah, class like, of 90, like he, 91 to 93, I think. Yeah, I got out of there in 89. Yeah, right? but uh, I'm, I'm sorry. 
You know, that's the thing about Michigan, the, the brand that nobody likes. You like to think Michigan sucks. You, you get <laughs> really smart people <laughs> with really good souls that are really athletic. That means like we're trying to create the ultimate young people there. I mean, okay, maybe it's not true. Maybe it is. No. But it's something to aspire to. Yeah. Yeah, well, whatever. Right? So is winning today's um, And you're punching the dude? I mean, that's what he's teaching Pete's week. Sorry, yeah. I'm there. And you know. Both sides, yeah. It it, this reminds me of like being in high school and, you know, you'd like, <laughs> you'd have a week off and somebody else, you'd show up, be drinking and get in a fight on the outside of the stands. Like, it's childish <laughs> shit. Yeah, it is. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's a reality. I mean, it deserves, you know, conversation and penalty. But the reality is, is that it's, it continues. Well, when, when can we learn to react better to things in all realms? It's not like, going to happen. Somebody's skipping I, up the, the, the tunnel. So yeah. what? Go in your locker room. But even like, didn't somebody reach and out and try to touch you, Tucker when he was coming through the... He did. That was another issue. He did. And, like, that and that's a, inappropriate, that too. That was an asshole for touching him on the head. But, yeah. you know, once again, Tucker's reaction was a little... What'd he do? He just turned and started yelling at him and started, like, swiping. I mean, that video cuts off really quick, but... Yeah, you know, but... I don't, it, blame, I don't blame him for reacting that way. But you see... But it, he didn't climb up into the stands and beat the guy up, right? I, I understand. But people will still say that he should have ignored it. I mean, I understand that there's a level of decorum that people that are, you know, players and coaches that we expect. But the fans and everybody else doesn't oh. just have free realm to do and say whatever they want without any type of response. What, uh, beating a guy's ass in the tunnel? I don't, I don't, uh, there's no What did he there. say? I mean, no, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Doesn't no matter. Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it does, but I'm saying in order well, to accurately assess. You kind of No, are. I'm not kind you, you of really, are. I want to hear there's no place for that. There isn't, but there's no place for but anything we from again. <laughs> Forget it. What's on the agenda, Charlie? Oh, you, you, I know what you're going for for Halloween is some, some Christmas candy. Some <laughs> ifs and buts and... Candies and nuts. nuts. <laughs> no, I'm saying we have to see the totality of every situation in order to accurately and fairly assess what incited it and to determine or measure the response. That's all I'm saying. Can't, and we don't. Can't beat a dude with a helmet. Yeah. No, you can't, shouldn't. Can't, you could say under shit about my mother. Under any circumstances. Can't, can't beat a dude with a helmet. You, if he's in, coming near your locker room and you're trying to get in there, push him out of the way. You I don't, can't, bother me. You can't you don't beat him. punch the opposing yeah. coach. Even if he puts his hands on you, you know, you're, you're trying to show something. And isn't that sure? what coaching really is? Allegedly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you get paid a lot of money. Nice fucking old fashioned. Be a little better when you get paid that much money. You're a representative. Regarding Juwan. I don't know if I ever said it, but like growing up in the 70s, when everybody's fathers were packing their bags and moving, and you got a, just a bunch of like busted household young, young kids, uh, I had a coach, Coach Bailey, mm -hmm. and if he saved one life, he saved 300 because he was that little league guy, you mm -hmm. know, and taught you these values and stuff. And then later in life, his son, Ronald, killed at least two children, mm -hmm. dumped, dumped them in the woods and stuff. And he got hounded and hounded, and, and he had to move away. And he moved up to the hills in, in Arizona somewhere. And when I got back here, and it all came back, I found him. I contacted him by phone. And I wanted to thank him because I know the burden that he carried for that. Mm -hmm. But all the things that he did for me, that there wasn't a guy there to put that into me. Your mom did the best she can, but, right. but the guy did. And I think, you know. But in all of that, he was probably overlooking or ignoring his own family's needs. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So. Fun. Oh, well, wait a minute. Why am I? Where's your hat, Charlie? I can't hear. Okay, what well, the, what I, I'm hat. sitting here with a oh. witch's hat on. Okay, there you go. Do something. I have a horse head. You want to wear that? No, no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the big, 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 big news of the of the weekend is the weirdness of Paul Pelosi being attacked. Mm -hmm. You heard on that one? Mm -hmm. what, which, okay, so Paul Pelosi, the husband of the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, gets attacked with a hammer in his own home. And mm, there's a million pieces of data coming out. Nothing ties it together. What's your take on that? I don't know. I mean, everybody's saying it was politically motivated that they that the guy was after Nancy Pelosi. I, I mean, I've got to peel back some more layers to figure it out. It is. I feel like there was a message attempting to be sent somehow, somewhere. 
How do they know that, Mark? No, uh, what aspect that he's like? It, it, I, look, it's to me the media yeah. is fueling all this because oh, now the, they are. Yeah. The guy's a nut job, right? No doubt about it. Like you beating somebody with a hammer, you're not home. Mm-hmm. You don't belong, right? Yeah, plain okay. and simple. So the left, the media, and the Twitter people instantly <laughs> this. You look up the guy's social media. He's QAnon, right wing nut, right? This is, and the, the politicians pick it up. This guy is everything that's wrong with America, mm. everything Trump and his acolytes are doing, right? Corner cornering them, yeah. Mm. But I haven't seen anything to, to show me that. I know some people like looked at the postings on social media, but then when you go see where he lived, look, I lived in Oakland near mm. Berkeley. I know mm. these kind of people. He's living in a broken down minibus. Mm-hmm. There's a big yellow school bus in front. You're not allowed to be living in a minibus in Berkeley. It's, it's against the law, right? It's vagrancy. Um, they got Black Lives Matter flags in the in the yard, gay pride. Uh, they're doing a ton of fucking hallucinogens, mm-hmm. according to the... Yeah, this guy's all over the map. He's I, yeah. Could it just be that he's a nut? But no, here's what the right does. The right now, with Elon Musk tweeting, possibly <laughs> this was his gay lover. And, the, and he let him in, and they were in their underpants having a tryst gone wrong, right? That's what he posted. Well, I haven't heard that. He you haven't heard that? Yeah. No, I didn't hear that. Oh, it's, yeah, it's like all over the joint. So you got two different wings mm-hmm. of the media feeding people what they want. Whatever happened to journalism? Okay, so it's when I do a crime story, it's pretty simple. All right, let, let me give you a few. Okay. <laughs> Was it a break-in? Simple question. Was it a break-in? The police says it's a break-in. Was there camera footage? Because mm-hmm. there's cameras on the Pelosi house. Mm-hmm. Why is the glass smashed in, falling outside? Outside, yeah, I saw that. Okay, the police give a press conference and say, still we have no motive. And yet the police chief says, you know, attacking public figures is way out of bounds and it's wrong. So you, you got to do better than this, bro, because you're leaving society to itself. Um, who... It's being reported by anonymous sources that he said, where's Nancy? Mm-hmm. That's where's better. Nancy? Is that on the 911 tape? How do we know when he walk, broke into the house, if he broke into the house, From that the he was saying, house. where's Nancy? <laughs> Who told him that? Because Paul Pelosi's in the hospital, right? Getting his skull, apparently, stitched back together. Mm-hmm. Who said that? I kept reading some more. Apparently, a source who was briefed on it, who wasn't there, right? Yeah. Preached by whom? Basically, Pelosi's you know, Speaker of the House, so there's feds involved, there's FBI involved, there's local police involved, but it was the local police that showed up. So if you really read what CNN's pointing out there, it's an official briefed on what happened, meaning mm-hmm. you weren't there, you're not a San Francisco cop, you're probably a fed that CNN in with the feds. Okay, so where did it say, where's Nancy? I heard that the police... Asked him what he was doing there, and he said, I'm waiting for Nancy. Could be. Mm-hmm. I, I'm waiting to say. He's a nut, n- no doubt. Not making any excuse about it. But the police also said when they responded, they knocked on the door, and a third person opened the door. Somebody opened the door, and then Pelosi's uh, husband and this nut job are fighting over a hammer to which the guy gets the hammer and beats him on the head in front of the police. Now, he's in the hospital with injuries. Mm-hmm. What injuries? Well, they, they say a, a dented skull, whatever that means, because he was hit with a hammer after Who? Uh, the police, uh, Paul Pelosi. No, this this other... He's, he's out now. The other guy? Yeah. yeah. He was in the hospital for a couple yeah. days. Why? Yeah, good can question. I, can I get that? Was he in his underwear? Because <laughs> now it's like, he was in his underwear, Paul was in his underwear, everybody's in their underwear. Oh. Oh. Well, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. (laughs) But only one news organization, KTVU Mm -hmm. in Oakland, it's a reputable Mm -hmm. place, reported that somebody was in their underwear and then they took it down. And now it's just starting to, shit's rolling downhill. You know what I mean? Yeah, let's just see the police report. Okay. Uh, The dude, according to sources, did bring zip ties. He brought duct tape and he brought a hammer. So what's that tell you? Well, Charlie, I don't. I don't think you're rendezvousing no, you're no from good. the back pages. Hey, bring your zip ties and a hammer. I was gonna say, I don't know. I mean, here's what I I think. Just what I think as a reporter. I try to relax and not tweet shit. According to neighbors, 
The dude's a dope fiend. He lives in a trailer, does heavy hallucinogens, right? There's Black Lives Matter, gay pride, uh, and his postings are Jesus is the Antichrist. Not necessarily some MAGA shit. It's nutbag shit, okay? Here's, here's what I think's going on. The country's out of control, right? 80% of us believe that. The other 20% are partisan. Probably, you know, 50% of Democrats believe the country's out of control. 80% of independents, 90% of Republicans. Who are these other 50% of the Democrats? Don't know. Well, you live on college campuses and behind <laughs> gates? The country's out of fucking control, especially the West and East Coast. You got homeless encampments everywhere, mm -hmm. open drug bazaars, old Asian ladies getting stomped, right? No cash bail, people getting pushed off of subway platforms. Mm -hmm. I mean, are we really doing this? Yeah, we are. It's it's a MAGA thing, or it makes clicks. No. It makes good clicks. I mean, the fact of the matter is, the guy is assaulted in his house, right? Yep. Isn't that isn't that what really matters? I mean, it's kind of frightening. Why? I don't know if I really care. The guy was assaulted in his house. It's a fucking loon. Okay, so yeah, he I'm, is a nut job. I'm like, here's the loon on the other side. Um, Congressman Lee Zeldin, he's running as a Republican for the governor of New York. He's running on crime. It's neck and neck. Remember, he got attacked. Guy goes, what did he say to him? Uh, You're done. Yeah, it came. Yeah. And then he, the he had brass knuckles mm -hmm. on with, with two, two fucking blades on it. He got wrestled to the ground. Was that because Joe Biden is talking about um, any Trump supporter is a semi-fascist? Hmm. <laughs> what are we fucking doing? Contributing to our own demise, Charlie. Everything's like this, Right. COVID was the most political disease in the history of the world, right? Wasn't it? Yes, it was. Okay. It still is. On the right, you're, de you're denialists, right? You're, uh, you're a murderer if you don't wear a mask. And then, uh, you know, on the left, everybody's going to die and you got to stay in your house and trying to save lives. And right, the un it, this is a uh, pandemic of the unvaccinated. Mm -hmm. And yet... All data shows you, at least in Michigan, since the vaccine, we've had more people die. Mm -hmm. Whitmer's running around saying I only kept kids out of school for three months. That's true. Well. Right? The right wing's yeah. running around. was a fake election. It wasn't fake. Yeah, they're still saying that. Show me the evidence morning. and show me who did it all these years later. And stop talking about Cobo Hall. I was there. <laughs> what are we doing? We're being hysterical and we're being alarmist. I mean, those are just the two things that's going on in America right now. Yeah, but I mean, every everybody's reacting, everybody's believing, mm -hmm. whether it's, I mean, to me, it's, it's driven by more emotion. I think people are angrier today than they've ever been for whatever reason. Uh, and for some, everybody now believes that they are the, the truth. Their perspective is the truth. And nobody's receptive to any variance of that truth under any circumstances. See, I like, I think I get what you're saying and I agree with it, but it's like there goes your way buddy. out there generalization because <laughs> I think actually most people are yep. sane. Yep. Most people don't overreact. <laughs> if you go to Twitter, you see it's the same fucking assholes over and over, over, and over. And over. <laughs> but same, same with the right wing media. Yeah. You, you could see what they're doing. But Charlie, people are different now. I and mean, I don't know if it was from the lockdown. I don't know if it was the fear yes. of COVID. Yes. I don't know if it was the detachment from personal interaction yes. over that period of time. Money. I don't know. Money. All that stuff. People just, even normal people that aren't erratic on either, they're different now. People people are acting very different. They are. Just, uh, just they are. And uh, it's strange. And I think political leadership and the media is doing us no favor. And I, I agree. I ask everybody mm -hmm. to go by your own drum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right. I really do. Except like lay off the hallucinogens and don't <laughs> live in a fucking hippie bus. Like hippie Jesus going to move out there now. He, he moving out there. You, but I'm worried about him because he's going to move in to his motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> he's just going to have a motorcycle. It's a moped, probably. A and he just, he's just going to lay on it. <laughs> should trust could, the assistant. He could, he could do that, though, with his braids. So you got to remember, though, too, like, again, I spent mm -hmm. some years out there, right? You got to remember what was going on in Pelosi's house with the left wing, mm -hmm. right? They didn't like the stimulus. So, like, 
they're planting pig heads on the property, right? They're camping out. They're protesting the war vote, right? They're doing a, a lot of stuff. They're all fucking nuts. I remember Portland. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I remember January 6th. Yep. Hold on a minute. So bringing it back to what happens in a football tunnel, that's why it's important. It These is are the important. leaders of tomorrow. But Charlie, it's important in our daily interactions. People, you get cursed out for, you know, people are shooting people for pulling in front of them. I'm telling you, it's at every level. It's a different thing, but it's the same thing. And it's and it's everywhere we look these days. And like, you know, like, like Kanye, it's like, um, look here. The guy was saying outrageous shit years ago, like slavery's a choice. But why was he still hanging around? Because he could make the corporations a bucket load of money and right? that's all that matters ugly shoes bad jackets and filthy hoodies i mean yep. really but that's every it's all about the money charlie it is all about until the money. it ain't about the money well until it's not but that's what see, it, that's what it's about see the manipulation mm -hmm. i mean oh man all right listen so um things maybe maybe there's a moment to catch our breath the stock market's catching up right uh hopefully inflation's under control everybody understands what the fed's doing there's now more housing stock than there's been right interest rates are still at a historical mm -hmm. average now might be the time to get the house you can always refi if the rates go down which everybody's thinking so if you're thinking about refinancing or dipping your toe in there's that house i recommend david hall Hi, I'm David Hall from Hall Financial. The top rated realtors in Michigan have said that our five-star certified pre-approval is a game changer to the home buying process. Hall Financial's focus on speed and client service allows you to take on the housing market and win. When you're ready to purchase your new home, you need to make Hall Financial your first call. The mortgage company realtors trust and buyers love. 866-CALL-HALL or chat with us at callhallfirst.com. Now, speaking of COVID, let me tell you a story. I walked in Detroit City Hall the other day, placed my belongings on the security belt. When they emerged, a wadded mask and a crusty elastic bandage came out with them. They weren't mine. They looked like remnants from varicose vein surgery. No mask, no entrance. The security guard barked at me. And I said, whose rule is that? The pandem pandemic's over. President Biden said so himself at the auto show. Member? He goes, look, nobody's wearing masks, but you got to wear a mask at City Hall. Don't matter. That's the building rules, the security told me. And he gave me a dental mask, and I put it on, and my glasses steamed up, and my breath was stale. I had flashbacks to a pandemic long, long ago. Now, Biden might say it's over. The CDC might say masks are no longer necessary, even in nursing homes. But COVID pandemic is alive and well in the obsessive compulsory time capsule that is the Coleman A. Young Municipal Building. The sign at the elevator mandated, this is, this is true, mandated minimum talking and absolutely no singing lest respiratory particles spread the virus. One person, the sign said, should press the button for all. Now, how do you ask a guy to press the 13th floor without talking to him? So I held my breath. I reached around and punched 13 myself. Now up there on 13, a city council subcommittee was busy rubber stamping million dollar subsidies for developers conferencing via Zoom. One, two, three. Just bullshit after bullshit after bullshit. Now, Councilman Coleman Young II, friend of ours, he emerged from behind his plexiglass cubicle which remind me of Saddam Hussein on trial in his cage. <laughs> it's been some time since I've seen the councilman. So I gave him a big man hug. He wasn't wearing no mask, but that was okay by me. His cologne smelled nice. I took the uh, elevator to the 11th, the mayor's office. A custodian, a lawyer, and a security guard told me the mayor doesn't wear a mask around the building either. I can't blame him. My governor and my mother don't wear them. So I texted the mayor's right-hand man. What's up with the masks? The mayor's man returned a note that claimed, ding! It wasn't the mayor's call. It was the Detroit Wayne Joint Building Authority, which runs the joint. 
I thought the mayor had more juice than that. So I took the elevator back up to 13 where the joint authority has its offices. Nobody answered the door. So I went down to the fifth floor, the law department, my real reason for coming. There were signs on the couches warning you not to sit on the couches. And nobody there. I was there to get my freedom of information documents, the ones regarding public subsidies for private business people and the one for the list of warrants allowing people, the police, to capture people's cell phone data. And what do you do with the cell phone data that you capture inadvertently that you have no warrant for? The city's been blowing me off for years using COVID as an excuse. The mayor's right-hand man, bing, told me by text that city employees had been ordered back to work unless they could do the work just as well remotely. Now, judging by the empty corridors of City Hall, it seemed to me the city's public servants believe they can be just as surly and dismissive <laughs> from home. Now, down on the second floor, a sign at the city clerk's office read, mask must be worn at all times. Two clerks weren't. A man who was voting early had his black mask pulled below his chin, giving him the look of an Amish farmer. Can I help you? An attendant asked me. With nothing to be helped with, I just said, I'm here to monitor the election. <sighs> You're more than welcome to, she said with a sigh. How decent, I thought. No security, no pizza boxes taped to the windows. You see what happens when you come and you don't bang on the glass like a baboon. Empty-handed, no foyers in hand. I rode the escalator down to the exit on the first floor. That's when a security guard stopped me. Bro, they're paying us 13 bucks an hour. Chicken feed. We're essential, remember? We're here to protect the mayor and the council and the judges who hardly come to work anymore. Where's all that COVID money Biden sent? It was a good question, but I could find him no answers because it seemed that anyone who could answer the questions was at home in their slippers. And now a word from our sponsor. I don't know why I'm in the desert in my underpants. I don't know why these wolves are following me. But I need sausage. A good wiener is hard to find. So make sure you treat it kind. Sausage. You may run with a pack, but everything ain't meant to be said. Sausage. No need to cross the desert. No need to cross eight miles. Who these wolves be? Get back, bitch. Sausage. Order a Coney kit directly to your door at AmericanConeyIsland.com. Get those Coney kits. Tis the season. AmericanConeyIsland.com. 12 dogs, all the fixings, right to your door. AmericanConeyIsland.com. Who's, who's, who's the f who the homeless over here? <laughs> he is not homeless. He's not in costume, this is, is a he? homeless shelter, ain't it? It's get right in there, bro. <laughs> is that's, this a homeless that's shelter? That's what Mike Duggan said. Get right in there, bro. Get right <laughs> into my business. Yeah, he Bob did. Carmax with us. If you don't know who Bob is, you're new to the program. Bob's an old friend of the show. Bob Carmack, how do you describe Bob? Mm, bad haircut, drives around in a Corvette, got a body repair shop. <laughs> also got a lot of political friends, big time troubles with the mayor. Basically, it goes like this. Years ago, Bob Carmack was speculating on a piece of property that he bought and owned on the riverfront. Somehow in this industrial wasteland, he was going to build some kind of resort. Condos. Condos. Right next to the water sewage treatment plant. Am I correct? A little further down. Oh, Jesus. Can, just think about that for a minute. Luxury condos next to the sewer plant. I, I'm just saying, I mean, he puts a lot of money into it. Off he goes. It's his property. All of a sudden, Bob alleges Kilpatrick got his hands out. Kwame Kilpatrick went to prison. Uh, you're not going to pay the bribe. You're not paying the vig. You're not ain't pay paying no bribe. Ain't paying none of that. None of it. Okay, so lo and behold, you're handed another piece of property by the city. You believe it's 
compensation that you've been asking for since they scuttled your other deal. Yes, sir. Right? Because you put a little, put tens a of thousands into pre-development. Yes, sir. Okay. So he's got a new piece of property. Now, Bob says, correct me when I'm wrong, Bob. He goes to city council, goes, hey, I'm fixing to sell this property. I don't have the proper deed. I have a quick claim deed. I don't have, I'm going to sell it. I mean, what's going on? Correct so far? No. Wait a minute. Real quick. Well, we'll get to the details. Okay. Okay. But sort of. Sort of. Okay. So it's a quick claim deed. That's what I said. Okay. Didn't I just say quick claim deed? Yes, you did. Yes, I did. did. Yeah. And yes. then, but not outright deed, title, all that. But he goes to city council, says I'm fixing to sell. He sells for about a milski, right? It's all good. Nothing. Then all of a sudden, Mike Duggan gets elected. You've got another piece of property. Piece of property people like. Didn't, didn't the city come demolish it? Yes. That was my collision shop on Michigan Avenue. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Gets in a fight. Now he's brawling with Mike Duggan, the boss, the boss of bosses, right? The le Teflon leprechaun. <laughs> the so, mafia boss. So mm. now, Bob Carmack, are oh, you going to fuck with me? Mm -hmm. I'm going to fuck with you. You're going to fuck with me? Mm -hmm. You fucking with me? Mm -hmm. what, if I, what is this, taxi driver? You fucking with me? Pretty oh, much. Pretty me? much. You listening <laughs> to me? This is how it works in Detroit. Yeah. I'll okay. tell you that. So Bob Carmack, who drives a Corvette, has an auto collision shop, got a, Got some money from selling the land, and he puts a private eye on the mayor. Yes, sir. He does. Uh, we might have some of this tape. Uh, if you're watching, this is Bob Carmack's private eye. Ooh, where's he going? Where, where's the mayor going? He's going to see Sugar Baby. <laughs> <laughs> now, we like to say allegedly he was going to see Sugar Baby, right? Yes. Except... The mayor, oh, booty call, Midnight Mike on the booty call, driving way out to the suburbs to see Dr. Sonia. Apparently, they were just discussing, you know, infant mortality. <laughs> but somehow, the mayor's wife leaves him through all this, and uh, the mayor's uh, marrying Dr. Sonia. And who's at the mayor's wedding? We know? We know who the guest list was? Mm-hmm. Who was there? Give me, give me a few. No, I don't know. Was former Mayor Kilpatrick he was, there? I understand. I heard that he was there. He Wonderful. was there. Yeah. Was White Boy Rick there? I heard he was there. He was there. Hmm. This is nice. It's an all-star. This is unbelievable. I got a friend who lives in like D.C. And he's like, dude, your fucking town is a movie. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got Bob here fucking following him. So we just went through it all. So Bob gives it over to the media. And the media, all you had to do was really Google Dr. Sonia and Mayor Mike. And there they are, thick as thieves. They're raising money for her. They're doing mm -hmm. everything. Five weeks after, media won't listen to Bob. So far, so good, Bob? Yes, sir. So you rent a tractor trailer with a gi jumbo video screen on it. One of those jumbo video screens. And you're driving circles around City Hall with this video of Mayor Mike making his midnight booty calls. Let's All day go. long. All right. So, so far, we're good. So five weeks later... Whack! You're hit with criminal charges for what, bro? Four felonies on a deed fraud case on that piece of property. On that piece of property, I sold, and four years going on five. They put an ankle bracelet on you. Two. What do you mean two? I had one on my left ankle, one on my right ankle. I had an alcohol tether and a GPS tether for two and a half years. Okay, so the alcohol one I get. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The other one, <laughs> the other one, what was that doing on you? That was GPS for they could hear what I talked and, and they followed me where I went. For, uh, for the, the case on property. The case on property. So that's, exactly. a, to me, is civil. This isn't some crime. This isn't murder. Well, you never know when you leave and go get another deed. Yeah. <laughs> as, if, as if that's a crime that is very easy to do. See, the problem is it's a city deed. It's yeah. not my deed. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they try to say that it was a temporary deed. It's not a temporary deed. A deed is a deed. A deed is just a receipt like a car title. That's all it is. When I got the deed right, I went to city council, told them I got it. They said, thank you. Have a good day. Hmm. Once they said that right, that was it. I recorded the deed. I kept trying to still get this riverfront property. I had Kwame Kirkpatrick, uh, Derek Miller try to extort me. And then I had the mayor's people try to extort me. Okay, and I wouldn't pay them. And then I had a council person extort me for my Michigan Avenue building, which I owned there. Oh, yeah, Gabe Leland. Gabe Leland, yeah. 
I'm getting extorted by everybody. Wow. Did you pay taxes on that property too? Pay was taxes that, yeah. on it. So I asked them to give my money back, right? Yeah. You know what they said? You have a good day, buddy. Oh, come wow. on. It's hundreds of thousand dollars. Was this pre-COVID? What's that? Pre-COVID, right? Yeah. See, Kirby, I was telling you, the bureaucracy realizes they can be just as surly and dismissive from home. You didn't even need to go in. You just call up. They'll call you from home and oh, fuck you, Bob. Shit, they should cancel it today. We'll keep those tethers on you. So what's the news? What happened? Well, finally, finally, I found a good judge that dismissed the case, dismissed it, said there was no criminal intent, that if anything, it's, it is uh, civil, which it ain't civil. A deed is a deed. Mike Duggan, who I subpoenaed to come in and testify, who's only witness, really, that has any evidence because all his witness says we know anything. And then on their documents, they don't have no documents to prove what he said at his press conference. So everything he said at that press conference, he lied because he was terrified what I knew about his girlfriend, what I knew about him, about the money, all that stuff. You know what I knew? I knew he was going to that garage and he was coming out. That's all. I didn't even know who it was. I, did, I knew who it was after a while, but I didn't know he was dating the girl or, you know, screwing her. Oh, don't and it's funny, the media sorry, had that, but they no, didn't. No, 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 not the word, the thought. <laughs> it's the thought. It's <laughs> a little, little oh, Mike. I get you. Yeah, oh, like, oh, oh, little Mike. <laughs> Quick Mike. You hear that, Mike? 30 second Mike. Okay, stop, Bob. <laughs> okay. Gone to 60 seconds. <laughs> like the wind, baby. <laughs> well, the, the funny thing is, like, I was told by, you know, people in law enforcement that he wasn't living in the mayoral mansion. So that's I why I put him on. I there. went out there for five straight days and never saw him come or go. And I happened to mention it to you. But right. That, that's that's interesting because be, when when the election was won, they they were just on the backs of Mayor Bean to hurry up and get out. They were so anxious to get in that. And so I don't know if it was the wife. I don't know if it was the family. But they were like they, they barely got, you know, gave the man and his family time to pack and leave. They were so anxious to get in the manu again. But he, for, he, for yes. he wasn't they, there. They, whatever. Hey, he ain't there. I know, but Charlie I, maybe told he wanted me wasn't the presence. there. Barrel told me was it there. Mm -hmm. And if you know the mansion, you have under, mm -hmm. you have police, special protection in the yep, basement. Right. Well, I know every cop in Detroit. They're telling me he ain't there. Mm -hmm. Once they told me that, and they're telling me he's wrecking cars, getting drunk because he's driving after five by himself. Well, allegedly, I mean, we, you know, I, well, yeah. I, let now, me say I, that I, I do correctly. remember because he never had executive protection with him. He was driving himself because he said he said this himself publicly that he wasn't afraid and he didn't need executive protection. But people internally were saying they didn't. He didn't want anybody to see where he was going. So, like, here, here's here's what I know. Little guy just got steamrolled by a great big machine, for instance. Once that story broke, mm -hmm. right? And the mayor denies anything and it was all above board and there were no special favors done for the doctor and her nonprofit about infant mortality and whatnot. Then we start to find out, Karen interviewed the whistleblower. We start to find out there's a lot of documentation and yet the documentation gets destroyed, deleted. Not always destroyed because you... The dummies didn't know you could retrieve it, but he destroyed it. It went to Dana Nessel, who didn't see anything wrong with it. The guy that was involved with destroying it, he goes to work with Stephen. He's married to Jocelyn Benson. Exactly. Who Mike Duggan puts up for Secretary of State. They're all tied into Stephen Ross, who gets $100 million mm -hmm. downtown, right? Exactly. Your case gets kicked to Genesee County. Yep. The prosecutor is? David Layton from and Genesee County. As the prosecutor for for Kim Worthy, Kim Worthy recruits herself, sent it to the state attorney general's office, who is Shooty at that time. Shooty kicked it to David Layton, who David Layton's son works for Shooty. They become friends during Shooty's election. So they're all Mike Cox, all these cats. They're all mm -hmm. one. It's like a syndicate. Maybe, but uh, one one of the legal um, whispers to Mike Duggan at the time is Dave Masseron. Dave right. Mashwood did the bonding on the Flint water. Mm -hmm. David Layton fixed the books up in Flint. He is uh Well, no, you got, you know, I mean. I get, okay. If you're going to say shit like that, you got to tell people where to go get it. That's a, you keep it, keep it tight. Okay. Keep it tight here. He's the county prosecutor and he's the. No, I meant move along, you know, okay. basically. Like, no problem. Move along on that yes, one. Sir. But he got young people 
in the machine too. His sons work. They're they're all connected, you know. And Masseron goes from Flint, then he works for Duggan, Detroit. Then right. He, he, then he goes and does the budget for the, Whitmer, and then they found him a nice. Five hundred thousand dollar a year job running the books for Wayne State, even yes. though he's not even a certified public accountant. You get to see all of this. Mm -hmm. He keeps the money stays with the friends and family. That's how it is. It was during McNamara. It's the same thing now. And I, I this guy records everybody. Mm -hmm. So when he's out with City Councilman Gabe Leveland, who pled guilty to corruption, but yes. held his seat. Man, just the sitting there at dinner, turn. this guy shaking you down. I mean, it was so bad to shake down that he wanted to take extra guacamole and chips. He ordered them to go. I mean, that's how fucking cheap this is. I could see, I could see you guys in the parking lot, him with that fucking sagging bag of chicken and the, and the, and the, and the chips going bad. <laughs> and he's asking for thirty grand. <laughs> what the heck? This the is bonus. <laughs> This were, so like okay, so you got one tether off. I got both tethers off. Well, you got the drunk driving tether off. I got drunk driving tether. How'd off. that come off? You haven't hasn't been adjudicated. Well, once you just said the case was to Smith, I said, Judge, what about these tethers here? He goes, What? I said, I got tethers on here, right? He said, Who put them on? I said, That idiot right there. And he goes, Take them off too, just like oh, that. Wow. He took them off. It around two and a half years. Man, my legs are numb. There's no <clears throat> hair on there. Blood ain't circulating. I got holes in my ankle. Got a hole in my chest. I got cancer now oh, from I'm these sorry. things. Sorry. Allegedly. I got cancer, though. Yeah, you got cancer. cancer. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm sorry, Bob. Sorry about that. Sorry That's about all right. That. Now, who is your, the new judge? Callahan? My new judge, he's a temper judge. He is, was, it, uh, was, it, was it Callahan? It was Callahan. Yes, sir. Let me tell you about Callahan. Guy used to be a priest. That's it. That's why I got off, right? Not got off, but he followed the law, the Constitution of the United States and the state. That Michigan. dude is no nonsense. I'm no telling nonsense. You, that's a very Kwame good judge. Kwame Kirkpatrick emails or text messages. He was the judge on that. Oh, he was? Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. So you see the tangle. Well, we're, we're glad. So are they going to charge you in civil court with this property, or are they just... Time to move on? What's well, going we're on? in civil court right now, but the problem with them is that uh, David Layton said that he's going to take a look at it, that the judge did not follow the law. The judge followed the law exactly to the motion. There was a statute. Now, five, Layton, six, got, five, Layton, Layton got to stop this. Like, dude, like, it's, it's me and you. Exactly. You won't even talk to me about what happened in Flint. We're in the middle of an election season. Nobody's asking mm. Nestle how you blew Flint. Or what happened with the Midland Dam, right. or you know, suborning the Constitution to the will of the governor, or a million other fucking things. We're not getting anything. It's it's you, you. We can beat your ass. I want to know: Do you have to spend more of that money defending this in a in civil litigation? Yes. Oh, they're gonna drain you for everything, mm -hmm. though. Shit, they almost drain me now. You know, this is what they do. They got it down to a T. Because I talked to some other people, the same thing. They bring false charges. They mm -hmm. make you hire attorneys. They take you to court. They take you. I've been to court thirty-five times. I think oh. I've been there once. And I want to make a little donation out. to your legal fund here. You seen these new Biden hundred-dollar bills? <laughs> <laughs> hey, when you pull that out, start looking. Go at ahead, legal. get in there, Zoobs. <laughs> Show them the new Biden hundred-dollar bills. <laughs> Brought to you by Donald Trump, mm -hmm. Barack Obama, George Bush, and Joe Biden. They all. We're failures when it came to monetary policy. Here you go, sir. I need that. That's for you. Now, that's not a buy a payout or anything. It's not no. a bribe. Okay. No, I just want to make it clear. I understand. Okay. That. Guys, got can put it towards. Hey, hey, hey. Put it towards the your cancer. Thing I got is this uh, thing they put the chemo in. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Know. Don't don't put it for legal stuff. That's okay. that's for your cancer. There ain't no more wires. I might get electrocuted myself. Do you got do you got tumors or something? <laughs> what I got is uh, they put the chemo through my chest and so forth. You know the IV and so forth. So I got this capillary, they call it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's. Uh, do you got tumors? Or did they removing shit from you yet? No, it's just that uh, I had a tumor that was in down in the bottom of my rear end, right? But listen, dude, that that was called listen. your head. Here, here, let me say this to you: the tethers at the bottom. Is this thing right? on? You got electric current going I up left. it. <laughs> it's going right to the bottom of my rear. It's got no sense. Listen, if there's another one, yes, can I have that in formaldehyde? What's I mean, that? Like another <laughs> don't Charlie mass from your ass. I'm just put <laughs> oh it right there at the desk in formaldehyde. It'd Whatever like, you want, Charlie. It'd be no. like Dave Roseman's knee. Don't encourage him, Bob. Please. <laughs> hey. I asked Dave Roseman if I could get his knee because he has it. Yeah. Yeah, did you know the that? Jar, yeah. Dave Rosema has his knee the, that he got the, replaced. 
Why? In a jar. I don't know, but I'd love to have why it. Why not? But Be why like would Jeffrey you love Dahmer's to have fork. it? I'll Bob Carmack's ass. What is wrong with hey. you guys? Dave Roseman's knee. I mean, that's a trifecta. You're building your own monster. <laughs> <laughs> we already have enough of them. We don't need to build any more. Okay, so let's just get to politics. Now, last Thursday, we uh, go find the show on uh, YouTube, on my Facebook page, Charlie LaDuff, No Bullshit News Hour. We had a very vigorous mm -hmm. legal debate about Proposition 3, the abortion language to be or not be inserted in the state constitution. I thought it was illuminating. Mm -hmm. It was. <laughs> I'm not here to tell you how to vote. That's not what it was about, but I thought you should hear two heavyweight legal minds discuss it. Real quickly, I think we should talk about Proposal 1, Proposal 2, real quickly. Proposal 1 is term limits. So they say, currently in Michigan, mm -hmm. in state legislature, you're allowed three two-year terms as a representative. So you mm -hmm. get a total of six years. Then you can move over to the Senate or vice versa, and you get two terms in the Senate of four years. Four so that's years. eight. So a total of 14. However, you can mix it up. The problem there is once you're a representative, you move to, like, there's less senators than there are representatives. So people start to get kicked out of government. Mm -hmm. This new Proposition 1 says, okay, term limits. It's not 14 years anymore, it is 12. But it's 12 no matter how you want to do it. You want to do six years in the, in the, in the, in the House, in the house mm -hmm. or you want to do three terms as a senator. Right. So that's not really term limits because what it does, it allows everybody in the machine to hold on for 12 years. For 12. Right mm -hmm. there. So it's not really term limits. Having said that, there's something very good in it, which is financial disclosure. We're one of two states in the union where our elected representatives don't have to tell you what they make, what their investments are, what the lobbyists give them, what kind of lunch you had, what kind of job you're looking for, what kind of other job you have. So. So is it worth it? Six of one, half dozen of another. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how to vote me. I'm going to vote for it. I like the financial disclosure. Right. But don't be fooled. It's not term limits. Okay. Having said that, maybe... 12 years is good because the reason term limits don't work well is you got six years and then another dope. Right. And then six years in another dope. So the dopes that go there don't know anything about anything. Nothing. So it's the special interests, the lobbyists and their lawyers mm -hmm. that do all the work and you just, they buy you lunch. They tell you what to do. And give you a job afterwards. Exactly. So mm -hmm. I, I'm going for it. You? I'm going for it too. You? I don't know yet. Okay. Proposal two. This is the protect the vote. Slippery. The good parts of it are this. We will encodify in the state constitution that the only thing that determines who won an election is the vote. Right? And the only people that can certify the vote are publicly elected or publicly placed officials. There can be no secondary, secret, you know, other thing out here, we dispute that you're the canvasser, we're the can there's no the put in language where there's no dispute who has the final vote, right? Right. Canvasser. Having said that, within this language is this absentee ballots, beautiful. I I'm for that. I voted for that. That's mm -hmm. part of the constitution. But once you check a box saying I want to get all of my ballots absentee from here on. They'll mail them to you from here on. Right. But there's a problem. Do you remember the last election when they were ma mailing the absentee ballot application? Remember? Yes. And everybody was getting a bunch of them from people that moved away two decades ago. Right. Well, we're not going to get those anymore. We're going to get the actual fucking ballot now. Hmm. Hmm. The actual ballot. Wow. That's nuts. I'm not saying mass fraud will happen, but there's a lot of, they'll create a lot of belief that it's not, on the up and up. The real. So, number two, it now encodifies and allows special private interests to fund elections. Hmm. So, the local bar wants to go to your local municipality and say, hey, I'd like to give you a million dollars to help pay for that. They have to declare it. They have to, you know, let the public mm -hmm. know where they got the money. But I'm not into that. 
Mm. No private money going into the very basic thing, right? right? That public government is supposed to do. The most basic thing is an election. Right. And you're going to take special interest handouts? I think not. But you hear the caveats in both of those proposals that have to do with the, the financial side of it that are just kind of tucked away in it? Mm -hmm. I mean, pay attention to that. You mean what you're saying is look at all the money in politics? Well, yeah, exactly. And that's what that's what drives it. And that's what is of value to elected officials, whether it's money under the table or over the table or in a paycheck. I mean, there therein lies their value and pay it. Pay pay attention to that. So I'm voting personally. I'm not telling anybody what to Mm -hmm. do. I'm voting yes on one. No on two with the caveat. Come on back. Clean, clean that baby up. Get it right. Right. I'm totally for Everybody voting, not being disenfranchised, you, you know, not being, but I'm, I'm not looking for messy voter rolls. I'm not looking for Zuckerberg to come in here and pay for everything. <laughs> you could find one guy that could rig a campaign by just the money. Maybe. Being there. You know, so that's like, what we got. Like maybe, but it sure reeks. So what are you going to do on three, Charlie? Don't stop at two. I'm, I'm going to leave that to everybody. Like that one is so okay. difficult and open for interpretation. That I'm not even going to do that, not because I'm afraid. No, I right? understand. But I want you to do your work. I want you to read it, and I want you to read up on it. And whatever you vote, right? you got my respect as a fellow citizen. Right. And stay the fuck out of elected people's houses. Okay, private eyes, that's within <laughs> bounds. <laughs> Hey, he took my building down. What do you want me to do? Oh, right. Oh, than he, beating his he, ass. Didn't, he didn't attack anybody. I mean, he was on public streets. He was, he filed, you know. I mean, if you're going to be sneaky, you got to be good at being sneaky. Obviously, they weren't good. Bob was better. So, I mean, that's fine. Let me say this. I did not do it myself personally. I hired a professional, right? He did it. He stay, stayed away. They're ex-cops. There was a four-man team for three or four months. So there's nothing illegal about that. The city no, of Detroit not. puts private eyes on people on disability, trying to commit mm-hmm. fraud, right? Mm-hmm. I just did the same thing back to him, Yep. okay? He works 24-7 for us. So if he's working for us, why is he out here in Wix and getting a booty call? And I think it's important to say the... That you did not know. You just knew that he was know. going in the house. You don't know what he was doing when he was there. Maybe just, he was moonlighting as a housekeeper. Oh, yeah. You don't hey, know you that. Know, love your house. You want to get married? <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? Come maybe, on. Maybe so can, 10 can, o'clock can, midnight to can uh, check a, up. Can I ask a gossipy question? Oh, yeah. Would that be... He's kinda, here. So do you think that he married her to prevent her from testifying? 100%. Okay. I just wanted yeah. to know. All right. Thank you. Know, course oh i want to ask you um, don't trivialize my inquiry i thought we were going to dress up this today is a for smart halloween. guy now i did dress up for halloween <laughs> oh you don't think <laughs> oh, 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 oh me too it's a witch uh, costume. Oh. Uh, i got you charlie that's why I, 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 I apologize no you don't have to you don't have to apologize <laughs> okay it's uh, one last thing on that thing the society for investigative reporters and editors gave gave mike duggan the national booby prize for the most opaque and bullshit government. Hmm. Out of all the shit you could do in this country, he won that prize. That ought to tell you something. Like, you're deleting and destroying shit. Right. right? And too bad uh, we had got nothing but a nutcase, Matt DePerna running against nutcase uh, Dana, Dana Nessel. Nessel. Right? Yep. Because you're not investigating nursing homes. You, it, this is bullshit. By the way, mm-hmm. regular people, Regular people, nonpartisan, bullshit is bullshit is bullshit. bullshit and you is. got caught up in the blender, brother. Having said that, let us get out of here. Everybody, like they said, go to YouTube, go to the Facebook, um, where, whatever the fuck else. Count Red Bear, put those headphones on. You're going to love this, okay. Bob. And happy Halloween. And I'm, I'm going to say, we're going to go out on this happy Halloween, Karen. Yes. And, and, and today it is with a W and tomorrow it may be with a B. Huh? Think about it. Let's go. Go, Mark. Count Red Baron, two R's. <laughs> Look at fucking Zach. Misspelling Baron. You did Baron. Is scary spelled correctly? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Welcome to another Count Red Bearing very scary Halloween special. Between the COVID and inflation, getting fresh blood has been a complete nightmare. Normally, I would drive the red bearing mobile, 
but because a lousy driver hit my car, it'll be six months before they can repair it. <sighs> so I have to fly. To the roof I go. I got to get the short lata. So I'm going to fly! I'm not as light as I used to be! Oh, that kind of hurt a little bit. I think I'm going to take the Q-Line instead. Hello, good citizens of Detroit. Can you direct me to the Q-Line? Ah, I see, I see. On the other side of Woodward, the train sometimes comes down. He's going to close the doors on us. Hello, how are you doing today, sir? Oh, Dracula. Count the red bearing. Count the Dracula was a ripoff of me. Excuse me, sir. Do you know if I can take this to the blood bank? I need to make it with a draw. Hell no. We need to trade. Come on, fuck with us. Oh, my God. I think I've run into a gangbanger. I finally made it! Thank God! Riding on the queue line was worse than riding in my coffin to go somewhere. On to the blood! I finally made it to the blood bank! Now to go make a withdrawal! This is official business. I'm here to make a withdrawal from the blood bank. That's fine, but there's no, uh, you can't take any camera, no pictures, no filming in here because people, uh, for privacy issues, but some people don't want people to know that they donate, so. What do you say, donor? You mean I have to give blood? I was told I could come get the blood. Well, this is a plasma bank, not a blood bank. You might want to try the Red Cross. The Red Cross. Oh, I don't like crosses at all. Well, thank you very much. I'm Count the Red Bearing. Does this guy not know who I am? I am Count the Red Bearing. I should bite him on the neck. <sighs> This sucks. No blood. And I have to ride the queue line back home. The fucking thing goes in a circle. Oh, that's really scary. 